this here is my sweet pea bed um, and over the next few days I'll be digging this over and building a permanent sweet pea bed here um, so there'll be a, a timber surround like on most of my beds here um, and then I'm going to be putting a, a big sort of frame up with mesh on it and it'll become my permanent sweet pea bed from now on um, these are the sweet peas, it's one of several trays I've got and they've been in the in their polytunnel and they've been under cover since I've sowed them so now they need to be hardened off and now the weather is a little bit warm with perfect timing really and the fact that I'm building this this week so I'm going to go and put these in one of my carrot boxes where they can get the weather where the leaves can toughen and thicken up a little bit before they're planted out uh, so they get some protection in there so if we get heavy rain or heavy hail or something like that they won't get battered they'll be protected but they'll be outside in the cooler weather and they get used to the outside conditions so when they're planted in this bed they can rock it away Now I generally sow my sweet peas in the autumn but for the last two years they failed due to slugs getting hold of them and uh, just eating them basically and my sweet peas this year are spring sown ones and it's not too late to sow sweet peas now if you want to and if you've never grown sweet peas then you ought to. They are without doubt my favourite flower because uh, they just give you so much and it's continuous, the scent is gorgeous, they look lovely and you know they bring joy when you give them away so which i do as well i give bunches of them away so say so that's the sweet pea bed it'll be done in a in a few days no doubt knowing me um and then those plants can go in towards the end of next week and start racing up the structure i'm going to make for them so that's your first sowing for today sweet peas get after them <laughs> so on with a bit of sowing and the first couple i'm doing uh, these are from Sarah Raven, you can get them elsewhere, but this is where I got them from. And this one is Cerinthi Major, and now that's a gorgeous flower. I like to put sort of three or four stems of that in a vase of flowers, just because the flowers sort of hang down and they just look a little bit different. So it's a texture as well as a flower. And they are lovely, I mean, what's not like, what's to like about them? Can't sow them right now, need to soak them overnight, and I shall sow those tomorrow probably in the greenhouse and the next one i'm sowing is uh helichrysum now some of you might know this as the straw flower and it's a great flower for cutting for the vase but it also dries well as well so you can when you get to the end of the season or when you've had enough of them in the vase because they do flower for a long time sort of july to october once you've had enough of them you can start drying them off hanging them upside down in a bunch of time and put them in your shed to dry out and they're everlasting flowers, that's another name for them. Uh, make nice floral, floral arrangements for over the winter. <laughs> so I'm just gonna sow these on the surface of this compost. And that's another one done, I'll just press them into the, into the actual compost. And I think that's all I need to do with them really. pop a label in them. I'll pop them on a the propagator at home just to give them a boost. So that's that one. Then I've got some nasturtiums I'm going to sow and uh, this one is Jewel of Africa and this is a, a 28 cell tray and this is also from container wise. I'm pretty much using all container wise trays this year just because they're that good and you can reuse them all the reasons I said before really I mean you can just pick the whole tray up like that and walk off with it so easy to use and of course they've got the holes at the bottom making it easier to get the plug plants out and I'm putting two seeds in each cell nothing difficult about this and then I'll just push them in and again I'll probably start them at home in the greenhouse Actually, no, I'll just put them on the shelf here in the 
polytunnel, that should be good enough for them. And then we're going to get on with sowing some sunflowers after this. I mean, this isn't difficult. These are quite dry seeds. Uh, you probably could get away with soaking them. I've never bothered, I just put them straight in. They'll grow well enough. It's the thing with nasturtiums, they're so obliging and you can eat them as well. <laughs> it makes a lovely addition to a salad. There we go, that one can have three. So there we go, that's nasturtiums done. Just pop them in, bit of compost on top, job's done. People say I do all this sort of stuff very fast. Well, if you don't do it fast, you'll never get it done. <laughs> anyway, that's another one done. Now, the sunflowers, normally, like a lot of people, I tend to grow small, uh, tall ones. I like to grow the really tall ones, see how hard they will go. They're a bit of fun. But I also grow them for cutting as well for the, uh, for the vase. But this year I'm doing all cutting varieties. I'm not, I'm not going to waste my space on the tall ones or on the big head sunflowers. For me this year, that's a waste of time because what I'm wanting to do is all these are multiple branching sunflowers, which means that you'll get more than one stem off each plant, more than one flower. And it's the cut flowers I want this year because I need to get permission from the parish council first but what I'm wanting to do, depending on how well these grow, is I want to sell the flowers. And I'm going to donate all the profits from that to Ukraine. It's their national flower. And I thought it's something I can do at garden level here for them. I can't go and fight for them, can't, uh, can't go and help them. So this is my little way of helping them. I'm fairly sure the parish council will say yes, but it's in our rules that we're not allowed to sell produce. A little bit of surplus produce we can sell. But I'm hoping to sow 60 or 70 plants here. So it's not really surplus produce. It's, I'm kind of trying to go into it in a commercial way. And I know if I just sell them in the village, people will buy them and enjoy them. And I've got five or six different varieties to sow there. So this should make for a nice, uh, nice vase of flowers. So everyone benefits. And I've put two in each cell here. I want them to compete with each other in the cell. Now I've got this tip from um, somebody I know on an internet forum called Scrungy. He now posts on my channel as David. Um, and this was his little tip, putting them into competition with each other, makes the, keeps the plants shorter and uh, they produce better that way. So that one was Autumn Beauty. And I'll just go through the varieties with you. I'll say these are all self uh, multiple branching varieties. And I've also got Vanilla Rice, Piccolo, Chocolat and Red Sun and that one autumn beauty so i've got five varieties there and uh, no doubt i'll find another couple of varieties in my seed box at home um, but that's it for the sowing for today i hope you've enjoyed that i hope you've got got something from it i mean incidentally those sunflower seeds poundage from premier seeds direct cost a fiver so if you can go and order some look for the multi-branching ones see if you can grow some and do some good for someone if if you're of a mind to do that, you know. Um, it's just something I thought I would do. Anyway, look after yourselves, everyone. Stay safe. We'll see you all very, very soon. Tirana.